All right, gang, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to do another honest lens review, but it's going to be for a different lens. Yes, I know that I said for the whole of August, we are just doing exclusively just Sigma glasses. But today I just couldn't help myself grab a Zeiss lens, which is this one right here. 135 F2 Apo Sonar TZE lens for the EF mount. That was a mouthful. Let's begin. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna say big shout out to George's Cameras yet again for lending me this bad boy right here. And yeah, let's get on with the review. So let's talk about the pricing of this bad boy. So at the moment, this lens will not be on their website because I have it here in the studio. <laughs> um, it's gonna roughly cost around 3,000, maybe about 2,800. It's not gonna be too expensive but it's not gonna be too cheap as well. All right, so the built quality of this bad boy. So I've shot with a few Zeiss lenses in the past and all of them are pretty much the same in my opinion. So this bad boy right here is made entirely out of metal. I'm talking from top to bottom, inside and outside. The only thing that's rubber are the caps that comes with it and the ring where you mount it to the camera, but everything else, especially the ring for your focusing and stuff, are made out of metal. So this lens is built to last and it's 100% weather sealed. All right, so let's talk about the lens features. Okay, so this lens right here is 100% manual focusing B. So there's no buttons whatsoever. So the only thing that you have is this metallic ring that plays with your aperture and your focusing distance. And the good thing, or in my opinion, the great thing about this lens is, I don't know if you guys can see if it's too dark, but right now it's about four inches tall. But if you focus all the way to its minimum focusing distance of 0.8 meters, and you're gonna go to the aperture of F2, as you can see right here, the lens has now changed from four inches to six inches. So massive, massive difference. That's the only thing that this lens does is when you play with the aperture ring or the, um, the focusing ring, the lens changes its size. And yeah, that's the only thing that this lens has, which is kind of cool. Let's talk about the filter thread as well. So this lens right here has a 77 millimeter filter thread. The UV filters or the ND filters or the polarizers are not too expensive, so you can, you know, buy them for this lens. But in my honest opinion, if you are using this bad boy right here, you would not want to put a cheaper glass on top of this expensive glass because the lens itself has some like apochromatic coating that, you know, keeps the chromatic aberrations like minimum. So if you can shoot like, you know, during the day, there's no like dark rings on your images. And especially if you're shooting something through a glass, it minimizes that reflective and that ghosting effect that you, you see in some, you know, some photos that has no aperchromatic like coating. So this lens has like a built in sort of like filter already. So you don't want to put like a cheaper glass on top of this one because it's literally just going to ruin your image in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do now, okay, I'm just sat in the corner of the screen so I can put up all the photos that I've taken. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through all the image quality and then I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons. So I'm gonna kill pretty much three birds with one stone, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna just blabber on about the pros and cons and then, you know, just look at the photos and you know, if you think this lens is for you. So the first pro of this lens, in my opinion, Okay, so this is a manual focusing lens and for me that is a big big pro that's a massive tick right there because most lenses and most like guys that shoots nowadays that picks up a camera in the in the last maybe five years are used to shooting with autofocus and for me that just makes you a lazier photographer and it just takes the fun out of it and with me just shooting because i've shot with a few manual focusing lenses before and Funny enough, they all happen to be Zeiss lenses for some freaking reason, but with me, because I love doing street photography and like telling stories, like using this um, art form, like having a manual focusing lens just adds to the fun and excitement because you're not gonna get all the shots. It's gonna make you think outside the box. It's gonna make you pretty much think of where that subject's going to be so you can do your composition and then just wait for that subject to pop into that scenery and so you can snap it. 
and you know just for me that yeah as I said it just takes you know your creativity to another level it can make you like a faster photographer especially if you know with a manual focusing lens because the world is you know moving the whole time and if you just have an auto focusing lens then you know you're pretty much just doing half a job so for me having a manual focusing lens is a big big pro in my opinion anyway and another pro as well that this lens is sharp it is one of the sharpest freaking lenses I have ever ever used just, just the image quality the the contrast the color you know some of these shots are edited just a little bit but yeah like for a manual focusing lens and for an aperture of f2 like it's fast and like the like the image quality in my opinion is one of the sharpest sharpest lenses I've ever, ever used and this lens is great for you know low light capability in my opinion you know if you're doing a lot of like I'd say astrophotography I'd use this lens as well and like if you're doing a lot of like nighttime shoots so yeah those are the pros that I can think of that I've experienced using this lens okay all right going into the cons now so the cons it's a 135 millimeter manual focusing lens. <laughs> um, there's a lot of auto focusing lenses out there that's 135 to 105, and I can see why people don't like to use a manual focusing lens. Um, some of the shots that I've taken, obviously, there's some like back focusing issues or like missed shots because it is a manual focusing lens, and as I said before, the world will move all the time. And yeah, it gets, you know, a bit frustrating if you see like a great composition and there is a chance that you'll miss the shot because it is manual focusing. It's going to slow down your workflow, especially if you're doing a lot of like street photography. I would not recommend this lens on a street sense, you know, I would use it for portraitures. But obviously, unfortunately, it is the middle of lockdown and the freaking coronavirus is still here. I can't have models in my studio right now, so I mean, once... I book people and I will get this lens again and use that but yeah having a manual focusing lens and a street you know scenery it's a massive no-no because yes you will miss the shot and yeah you'll just waste your time just like zooming in and out faffing around and next thing you know that subject's gone and another one as well I said this as a pro but yes in a portrait scene, I can see why people would hate this lens. It is way too sharp. Some of the guys at the shop has told me, you know, some of the portrait um, shooters that bought this lens when it came out are starting to sell it back or trade it in because of that issue. It's too freaking sharp and the models that they've shot, like girls and guys, you know, I mean, I could see how some girls would not like it because it will literally show your imperfection and just the crevices, the zits, and all that shit in your face. <laughs> and yeah, too sharp, boys. Just way too sharp. And another one as well, as a con in my opinion, it's heavy. It is a heavy unit. Um, she weighs just under two kilos, but as I said before, when you are focusing up and down, you know, like zooming in, infinity to 0.8 meters this lens will move and it'll get longer just depending on the range and yeah it'll tilt your camera backwards and forwards it'll throw you off just a little bit all right so the verdict who is this lens for so this freaking lens so in my honest opinion this lens are for just the portraitures out there the portrait photographers if you like, you know, being old school, if you want like the image to be very, very sharp, you know, because you are paying for literally just the image quality. It's not cheap, you know, in a way, but it's not too expensive that it's insane. But the thing is, it is a manual focusing lens. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a gamble. It's a bit of a gamble. Is it for me? I would say yes. This lens I would put in my bag. So it's, it's, it's crazy, right? Because I am known for being a portrait photographer and when I upgrade to the R5, there's two lenses that I'm tossing up. The RF 100mm macro or this 
focusing lens. I don't know which one to get, but I know that once I get the R5, I'll have to literally pick which one. So that would be another video. But yeah, the verdict of this video and who is this lens for? For the portrait photographers, for the landscape artists and cityscape shooters out there. It's sharp, it's built great, it feels great and it's a manual focusing lens which I really really approve so let me know what you think down below if this lens is for you if you think it's too expensive for you know the lack of mechanics that it has and let me know down below if you know if you want to see some more of these um, honest reviews but yeah I got another Sigma lens review coming up soon it's just cooking up now I'm just editing it at the moment it'll come out sometime end of the week so that's about it for me this is Carlo aka I capture it signing out Peace.